Hello, welcome back to Titi Monologue. One more time, my name is African Professor Wan. If this is the first time coming to this platform, I can really ask you to subscribe, share with friends and family, talk to them about this platform. It's very, very informative. It's unscripted. I don't write anything down. As when it's done, it's done. The same way you see is how it is and it's authentic. And that is how I want it. So it's also freestyle. So I talk about a range of issues. So normally when I'm speaking or talking, you know, it doesn't probably flow logically the way, you know, the information does not go logically. But since it's unscripted and it's also freestyle, definitely you see some kind of, you know, disjointed, you know, conversation or whatever. But that's how I want it. It's authentic. I want it to be authentic. I want it to be real. And that's what it is. So one more time, this is Titi Monologue. It used to be Offin River Forum, but the name has been changed several times. But this is the current name. For this platform subscribe share with friends and family one more time this is africa professor one so today's topic will be about a country called india india and you may ask why do you single out india to talk about where well, wait till i finish the conversation i finish this discussion and you probably will have an idea why i chose india because india played a unique role in this era in this 21st century it, it plays unique role in the geopolitical affairs geopolitical space in this 21st century so i decided to focus on india and you will understand exactly why so before i dive or get into you know a little bit deeper into you know the, the the theme of my conversation let me give you a brief overview of india starting from when india gained its political independence from the british India gained its independence, political independence in 1947, you know, and uh, uh, since then it has established itself as the largest parliamentary democracy, or in other words, the biggest democratic society or country in the world. Its first prime minister, I may not be able to pronounce the name right, but it started with Jawaharlal Nehru, Jawahar Nehru. He was the first prime minister of India. He was a nationalist. He fought hard to push the British out from the, you know, from that unique, huge country in 1947. And uh, Indians also, you know, supported him to become a prime minister, first prime minister after independence. I think he ruled, he was a prime minister for what, by 16 years. He started somewhere in 1947, all the way till de his death in 1964, somewhere. So Nehru, I, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. So once again, like I said, India is the largest, the biggest democratic country in the world. You know, in terms of the size, the land mass, India is a huge country because if anything at all, if nothing at all, India is bordered by, by six countries, including China. And you know where I'm coming from. You know, today's world, you know, competing emerging power, China. You know, every now and then, India and China has some little land dispute in the Kashmir area, just like with Pakistan. So India is bordered by six countries. So that tells you the size of India in terms of land mass. And then when it comes to population, India this year, 2023, I think if I'm not mistaken too, India has overtaken China as the world largest or you know, most populous nation in the world. It has a population around 1.4 billion people so in terms of the population it tells you that india has a large consumer base economically has a large consumer base so every country want to trade or deal with india because it has a lot of people it has a large consumer base so you won't get a country like that to import things you know import commodities or items from your country you know that would be a good you know a boost for your economy so india and then again when you look at technology like uh, computer-based digital technology in the web india also rank among the you know among the best among the world so united states as technologically driven economy united states want to catch india into it come they want to have india into it ambit so it's not that easy. I'll tell you, I'll talk, talk to you to explain why India is a swing state. Go back and forth, you know, among the major powers. That makes it, you know. So, if not, if like back to the technolo uh, technology, India is, 
presumed to be the world biggest or largest biometric, you know, biometric technology. The, the India has the largest biometric technology or database in the world. So, you know, so if you look at the country, almost all Indians have digital, you know, ID system. And the United States want to tap into that, you know, um, that, that feed or that technology. See, India lead the world in biometric technology. That's a fact. You can double check and see. See, and then again, when it comes to military, India is a nuclear power. It belongs to the uh, nuclear power nation. India, India has nuclear weapons. So, you know, alongside with China, Pakistan, you know, United States, uh, France, you know, Fr um, um, Russia and all those countries. So India is, is, is no mere country. It plays, it's a very, very powerful nation. It has a large population. It has a, it's a, it's a democratic, largest or biggest democratic nation in the world. And it's a federal, a practice federal system of government, which means the power or the political power is not centered in the capital of New Delhi. You know, the power has been distributed you know, among the subnational government. So we have the central government, you know, central government headed by the prime minister, the currently Mundi. Mr. Mundi is the prime minister of India. And so he headed the central government. But below that, that below the central government, we have all the provinces or, you know, states, you know, uh, the states, you know, headed by governors. So India is a... Um, federal system of government and so it's not unitary government where like we have in britain or uh, uh, israel is a small federal system and so that is what india is it is it, about and then again india also has you know when in terms of nominal uh, gdp india has about so close to about three trillion you know uh, in terms of nominal GDP, three, uh, uh, three trillion U.S. dollars, and then when it comes to GDP in terms of PPP, which is uh, uh, the parity, you know, rate, India, you know, purchasing power parity rate, India GDP that in that in that terms, consumer terms, India, you know, hover around like thirteen points, you know, one or three trillion. So. It tells you not only that India has a large population, it also has a large consumer base. So that makes it a very, very, you know, a viable candidate for every country in terms of trading, you know, with India. So that is what I can give you briefly. That's what I can give you about India. And in terms of, you know, uh, culture, you know, movies, industry, we know, I know a lot about India when I was growing are back in, you know, in Ghana. Everybody knows Indian movies. They have a large, if you go to Bollywood, India has, you know, India has a large repertoire of um, movie stars and wherever across the world, across the group. And, you know, their presence, you know, is fed all over the world. So India is, is a very, very important nation state or country in the world. So now back to the, the question, the reason India is a swing state. When we talk about something that swings, it means you go back and forth, back and forth. So India is a swing state because India pursue or has a policy called one of the policy called the principle a policy of strategic autonomy. The strategic autonomy informed India to be independent in terms of playing with all the major powers in the world. See, let me just give you a brief, you know, let, let me just take you back to the Cold War era, when the world was split into two, we have the Warsaw Pact nation led by the Soviet Union, the then Soviet Union, and then we have the NATO nations led by the United States. So the Warsaw Pact was made mostly, you know, the communist socialist countries, and then the NATO countries more liberal democratic system. But you may, you will say, why then, I said, world leading democratic nation, India did not join you know, the NATO nations. No, India want to be non-aligned or India doesn't want to be seen to be aligned itself completely with either the Warsaw Pact nations or the NATO, you know, countries. So India was left in the middle. 
so strategically it was autonomous it was you know it just is independent on itself economically politically so wherever it sees necessary or where whatever it sees that it benefits its supreme national interest you know india pursue that so when it comes to military supply chain mostly we can say that india traditionally import most of its military equipment and munitions from russia but that necessarily means india align itself completely with russia just the same way india also you know trade with united states in terms of, in terms of technology export technology and then you know most of its human resources in terms of india has a very good human resources base in terms of technology but still that and the fact that india is also the biggest democratic state doesn't make mean that india you know align itself completely with the western led you know uh the nato led by united states you see so india in this case was playing a string or non aligned you know uh policy at back then and so until soviet union disintegration in the late 1980s and early 1990s so uh, to 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 that time today india is still playing the role of a swing like i said whatever what, whichever way india sees you know that it benefits or it align with its economic interest india pursue that that is what india does so it makes india swing because today like i said india as a global swings nation state if you look at what the world is beginning to shape now the trajectory of geopolitical you know the the the, the, the geopolitical trend of uh, the world politics you can tell now russia and china has been partnership together they try as much as they can to upend or to dislodge united states as you know united states led world order and to in replace russia and china want to establish a world order that involved like multipolar or multinational world order where we don't have presumed power like we have all these competing powers in the world as opposed to one in you know, polar world led by united states and so china and russia are trying as much as they can to woe india into the account just like united states is also trying hard uh, to get india into the account so you, you can tell like this year and in june somewhere in june president uh, prime minister Modi of india visited washington and you can tell the body language and everything with president biden and Modi tells you that no you know united states is trying as much as it can to get india into account just like russia is also trying and all china you know since china shared border with india the last thing china want to see is india being or going into the camp of united states so it makes india cloud in the global politics so pronounced and so you know more important than ever before so india still just like it used to do in the cold war time it stays in the middle and it's a world power it has all it has a lot of resources it has a large population it's a democratic nation it's a nuclear weapon nation it has a large consumer base even though india is not where it wants to be but uh, projections no no the global projection economic projection indicate that if india you know growth economic growth keep on you know trending the way it is by the year 2030 india will become the third largest country it will surpass germany japan to become the third largest economy in the world we we we, we see what will happen so india is no me a country so in that sense almost every country especially the major countries major powers want to get india into their account but india like i said pursue a policy of strategic autonomy so the strategic autonomy autonomy you know means that india wants strategically want to be independent in terms of the global affairs global politics it want to stay in the middle and wherever it sees necessary you know it just all that align with it national supreme national interest it's, it's pursued that and that is exactly what is happening today like i say if you look at india technological base 
most of the technological companies in the United States, IBM, you know, start the software company, Apple, Google, Yahoo, all the major, major technological company, and, uh, you know, Tesla companies, all the major, major, you know, you go and find it, the labor pool, you see a lot of Indians, most of the workers, tech, you know, software engineers, computer programmers, they're all from India, they're all India extraction. So that make India a unique country. And now the world is driven technologically. So China is trying to still get some of these technological ideas just to try as much as it can to overtake the United States. So it needs also India technological know-how. And so that is what it is. So it makes India a swing state. India, like I said, pursuing one more time, a strategic autonomy policy. That makes it, you know, a swing that, you know, it just don't want to move to anywhere. It stays in the middle and where it sees necessary, it goes. And that is what it is. So if you look at the world, around the world, all political opinions, experts, you know, tag India as geopolitical swing state. And, you know, based on what the few, uh, you know, uh, the little description I've given you, you know, that can give you a fair idea of why India is called or is termed a global swing state. So one more time, this is Titi Monologue, and my name is African Professor One. Subscribe, share with friends. When you come here, you hear a lot of things probably you don't know, or you know, you may know, but you don't have a, a clear explanation of it. You come here, you get it. So tell your friends about it. Please forward this video to your friends and family and let them know about this platform. And uh, my name is African Professor One, and I'll talk to you another time. Have a great day. Bye.